Good morning and welcome to another wander. Today's wander is going to be the entire length of what was the Cromford Canal. So we're at the northern end of the Cromford Canal now, just in over the back there in the trees is the Cromford Mill, which was built by the legendary Sir Richard Arkwright in 1771. So we're going to follow the whole length of the canal and we're going to see some of the features and industry along the way. Right, so let's get moving. Right, welcome back. So as I was saying, I'm here to walk the entire length of what was the Cromford Canal. So the canal itself was opened in 1794. It was designed by two gentlemen, one called William Jessop and the other Benjamin Outram. I'm doing a dual recording today with the Zoom H1 for audio boo and I'll also use it as the sound for the video that will find its way to YouTube which is being recorded with the GoPro Hero 3. So Cromford Mill which I'll flash a picture on screen now as I was saying was built in 1771 and it as it's still standing now it is the first, or well, it's renowned as being the first factory. This section here is in the uh, Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. And if you want to find out more about this historic place, then you can head on to their website. So I've been planning to do this walk for a long while, and it just happened to be quite convenient today. So I've left my car at Cromford, and my girlfriend is going to pick me up on her way home from, sorry, on her way home from work at five o'clock. So it's now around about 20 past nine. So I've got around about eight hours to get the walk done. So it's a race to try and get to the finish to meet her, but it's also a race against the weather. It's very windy today. Uh, it's due to rain around about three-ish. So hopefully we'll survive the onslaught of the heavy rain. And I decided to do this walk today because I originally planned a wild camp tonight somewhere high up in the Peak District but the wind is terrible, the rain is forecast to be terrible so it would just be a terrible idea. Right, so as we move further down the canal itself the short section here where the canal is intact is five miles long from Cromford to Ambergate. Right, let's keep moving and Let's see what we can find along the way. A train for starters. That's the line from Derby to Matlock. And Matlock is where the line terminates. So if you wanted, you could get the train from here, or to here, sorry, from Derby, and get off at Cromford Station. Right, so from me, and the coot. <laughs> I'll see you later. Right, another point of interest. One of the first ones that you meet on the way south from Cromford is the High Peak Junction, which is just in the distance there. So the High Peak Junction is where the High Peak Railway met the canal. And the railway once led all the way over the top uh, towards Buxton. It's now a very nice, actually, cycle trail. And we've just heard in the last few months that the plan is that the National Park Authority, the Peak District National Park Authority, are going to join up the High Peak Trail with the Monsell Trail and create a big loop, which should be nice. So if you'd like to view the video of my cycling adventure with my friend Ray along the High Peak Trail, then you can do by click the come on, click the video link just up there. <laughs> and for those listening on audio boo, head over to my YouTube channel. Right, it's a beautiful day out today actually at the moment. Uh, high cloud, relatively thin. I can see uh, areas of blue, but it's all good. Right. So we're about to arrive at another place of interest now. And as we're following a waterway, I'm hoping this is going to be a really good day for nature spotting. Right. 
Right, so this is the mighty River Derwent, just off the bridge here. The Leewood pump house is in the distance there, and the pump house takes water from the river to keep the level of the canal topped up. And at certain weekends, I think during the summer, you can see the pump house in action. So we're going to cross three valleys today, or we're going to travel through three valleys. The first one, which I'm in now, is the Derwent Valley. And when we get to Ambergate, we're going to be crossing over into the Amber Valley, believe it or not. And then there is another very interesting feature of the canal, which takes us from the Amber Valley, or once took the canal. We can't, be, we can't take it today, sadly. But uh, it takes us from the Amber Valley into the Erewash Valley. I'm not sure if I've mentioned we're actually travelling down to Langley Mill today, which is the end or the southern end of the 14 and a half mile journey that the Cromford Canal once took. And it's there at the, the Great Northern Basin where the Cromford Canal used to meet the Nottingham Canal and the Erewash Canal. Like the Cromford Canal, the Nottingham Canal has suffered a similar fate. It's been filled in in places, but the Erewash Canal is still navigable and you can take it all the way down to the River Trent and the Trent and Mersey Canal <laughs> off the top of my head, if that's correct. Right, let's keep going. Right, welcome. We're about to enter the Gregory Tunnel. I was just talking to two gentlemen back there who have just uh, exited the tunnel. Hopefully you can see me. <laughs> My friend Ray and I came on the bikes through here about four years ago and uh, <laughs> I had my sunglasses on and as you get further to the centre obviously it gets slowly darker and darker and it's quite thin it's only just about the right width, width to get a bike through and I almost hit the side <laughs> and obviously there's this uh, rail here now it was here before but it did feel like I was going to fall in Right, up on the hill there you can see Crouch Stand. Welcome back. Well I've just exited the Gregory Tunnel and I've just uh, run into a gentleman who's on his bicycle and he asked me what I was doing. I said I was recording some audio and video for PeteRoots.com and he mentioned that he'd heard of it and what's your name sir? Stuart Brady. Stuart Brady and whereabouts are you heading today? Uh, just up to Cromford. Bacon yep. sandwich, cup of tea, and then back to Belper. Excellent. So, uh, whereabouts do you head usually on the bike? Are you a. Uh, I mainly walk. But, yeah, you're mainly uh, a walker, yeah? It's just this morning because it's going to pour down this afternoon. So, yeah. I can do this easily. Yeah. Two or three hours. Whereas yep. to walk it might take a bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was my thought today. As it's really windy and the weather's about to get bad, I thought I would stick low today. Yeah. And well, obviously, it's a south wind, so yeah. I might even cheat. Yeah. And catch the train from Cromford to go back to Melbourne. It'll be a <laughs> bit of a bash into the wind otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well thanks for having a quick word. Pleasure. And I'm gonna Yeah, and thanks for the uh, the podcast, the website. It's very interesting. No yeah. worries. I shall uh, yeah. keep the updates coming and yeah. Hopefully you'll be able to catch this video and podcast at some point over the next few days. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Right, welcome back. So if you can hear me over the sound of the crows there up in the tree. We're at uh, Watt Stanwell now, which is two miles from the end of the complete canal at uh, Ambergate. Watt Stanwell is also famous <laughs> for one reason anyway, one reason that I know is that it was the home of the now dame Ellen MacArthur, who is the famous round the world yachtswoman and I think she held the the world record for the fastest uh, solo circumnavigation so this is where she's from Watt Stanwell in the beautiful Derwent Valley just down here is Watt Stanwell station and you've got the 
Oh, what road is that? It's the A6 in the background there. Right, let's keep moving. Right, we are approaching the end of what is the intact section of the canal now. And just down there, you can see the railway bridge. Under that bridge passes the River Amber. So now we're leaving the Derwent Valley. Just down there is a train going over said railway line. And we're leaving the Derwent Valley and heading into the Amber Valley now. Right, my phone's ringing, so I'll speak to you lot shortly. Right, so this is the section that I've been talking about for what seems like such a long time now. The end of this very picturesque and intact section of the Cromford Canal. And as we get further down, you'll see why it is no more. There is now a pipe works here. So the remainder of the water that's in the canal flows down this little uh, run here through the pipe and down towards the River Amber. And you've got the pipe works here. So we're going to head towards Bull Bridge and then over towards Buckland Hollow. And we're going to pick up the original course once again. Right. That's an eyesore. <laughs> right. Welcome back once again. So after the short detour um, past the, the pipe works at Bull Bridge, between Bull Bridge and Ambergate, I'm now back down near the original canal once again. And I'm going to attempt to follow the course as well as I can really from here to Buckland Hollow because it crosses a few roads, a few railway lines, and then obviously you can see here that uh, the section of the canal isn't really flowing or anything like that, so it comes to an end once again. So, I mean now, we'll just look over the fence here, over the wall, and you've got someone's house there now, where the canal once flowed. So. Let's keep moving. Right, so this section here was once the Bullbridge Aqueduct, where the, where the canal once crossed the River Amber, which is just down there, and the railway line, which is directly ahead. And we are about to cross the railway line ourselves. So, you have to bear with me two seconds. Obviously, I'm going to stop, look, and listen. So I'm able to beware of the trains. Right. Yeah. Any trains coming? Doesn't look to be. Please don't tell me off for this. No trains coming. Right. <laughs> tell me off for uh, videoing on the train lines. So the, the aqueduct would have come across here. I do believe that uh, it was blown up in, I think, 1960s. In fact, as luck would have it, we're about to cross, well, we've come across a sign. Bullbridge Aqueduct was once one of the major engineering feats of the Cromford Canal, engineered by Benjamin Outram and William Jessup. And it crosses the A610. And it says, remarkably, it survived until 1968, by which time, even the installation of traffic lights, it was causing unexpected, unacceptable delays. Despite opposition from two national waterways organisations, which proposed widening the road whilst maintaining the canal in place, the aqueduct across the road and railway here, so the railway, were demolished. Right. So you can see a cross-country train there. And that was the original view. Right, I'll take a picture of that. We are here, by the way. And we've come from there, and we're heading all the way down here. Right, so let's get moving. Right, welcome back. So we've picked up the pace. We've crossed the road down there, near the Bullbridge Aqueduct. And we've now reached the sawmills gauging stop. On this sign it says here, the narrowing of the canal ahead which you can now see on video, was built to enable boats to be gauged 
to determine the amount of cargo being carried and thus the toll to be paid. And it looks like the friends of the Cromford Canal are doing some great work here to um, rebuild this particular section. I must say hats off to the uh, friends of Cromford Canal and all the other organisations that are working hard to try and preserve this uh, important piece of the history of the area. Right, welcome back. So we have now arrived at the tunnel just before you get to a pub, which is now, in 2014 anyway, called The Excavator. So it may well have changed names by the time that you watch this or listen to this. This section of the canal is well and truly filled in. And just further back towards Bull Bridge, um, a lot of it is now people's allotments and gardens. And it follows the route of a railway line as well, which is just to my right, which is the south of my current position. And it brings you out into the excavator car park. A very busy little road here, uh, the A610, a few roads joining it. And here, the canal took a sharp right-hand turn or swung from an easterly direction to a southerly direction and it went underneath the railway line. So that's what we're going to do now. Welcome back. So I've walked up from the excavator pub now and we're at another one of the very tranquil sections of the Cranford Canal in Buckland Hollow. I should think there for a second. We're about to go underneath another bridge. Right, I've reached the section of the canal now that goes between uh, Buckland Hollow and Lower Hartsey. And this is the end of the line for this section. So I'm going to cross up and over the A610 now and then drop back down below. But you can see at this particular section the canal is flowing. So it's still flowing underneath the roads. Right, onwards and upwards. Here we are once again, back down at the opposite side of the A610, where the canal reappears. As you can see, there, I mentioned that it was flowing still, and you can see there that there's the uh, pipes under the road. So here we are again. Right, welcome back. I just walked up from that sort of direction. And now I'm about to show you one of the, for me anyway, one of the most impressive features along the canal itself. I mean, to build something like this in 1790s, in the 1790s is impressive enough. But this here is the western entrance to the Butterley Tunnel. Now, it's not the original entrance because, as you may well hear now, we've got the monstrosity that is the A38 dual carriageway running ahead, or running overhead. So the official tunnel entrance is further down. But as we can see here, it is now open. The last time my friend Ray and I came here, that was bolted closed. So I'm going to try, without falling in, to try and get you a little bit of a better view of the uh, tunnel itself. Right, we're not going to go any further down than that, I don't think. So, this tunnel, the Butterley Tunnel, stretches around about one and three quarter miles over towards uh, Golden Valley, where it comes out at what was the Newlands pub. The tunnel is an impressive piece of engineering in my eyes. Um, they used to have underground wharfs to service the local pit which was called the car pit. Not carpet, the car pit. But um, there are numerous, I think there's three air vents along the road now that we're going to take. Obviously we can't get into the tunnel and if we could I haven't got waders. And the last I heard the tunnel is blocked off um, from this section, I think it's 
a third in and the other section I think it's a third in as well that it's blocked off but there are pictures if you go on the canal website which is the friends of Cromford Canal you can uh, find some images of someone that did a survey and got inside the tunnel itself so what we're going to do we're going to head towards a place called Hammersmith not the Hammersmith in London but the Hammersmith near Ripley and we're going to walk alongside the Butterley Reservoir which was originally built to service the canal to restock its water supplies built by Mr Ottram and crikey the other chap I forgot his name now <laughs> and it was where the Butterley company once stood now it's no longer trading anymore I think it ceased trading probably about 10 years ago but they've built some really famous uh, things over the years to name a few the Spinnaker Tower which I think is in Southampton uh, the Falkirk Wheel and many other things that ordinarily I would have on the top of my head <laughs> but check it out the Butterley Company I think that was formed in 1789 something like that and it was one of the biggest employers of the area so we're going to head this way and we're also going to be able to see the uh, uh, Butterley railway line which is now a museum and you can take rides on steam trains diesels and all sorts of other locomotives but it's worth a visit the Butterley railway check that out too right rather uninspiring little walk here but we're gonna pick up where we left off when we eventually get to the Butterley Reservoir join me shortly welcome back once again so we're now taking the footpath which is now marked as the Cromford Canal path um, and this as you can see here not on audio obviously but this is the Butterley railway line and we're going to cross over the end of the line for Butterley is just back that way but this way leads you to um, Swanwick Junction and then down towards uh, Golden Valley so we're going to pick up the path that runs alongside the reservoir now the Butterley Reservoir stop look listen beware of trains time to pick up the pace so we can stay ahead of the weather. The reservoir. Now I'm being quiet because there's fishermen here. But I'll take you on a bit of a side detour. If we run down here. Excuse the rubbish. What I'm about to show you now is a side entrance which obviously we're not going to be able to get inside but this is a side entrance to the uh, canal tunnel my friend Ray and I found this when we were doing some history hunting a couple of years ago and it's a side shaft and it leads you in and then down to the tunnel right let's get back out again in fact I'll take a photo so bye for now welcome back once again so I'm now tracing the uh, path that runs across the top of the Butterley Tunnel or should I say road that runs across so Butterley Reservoir was back that away back to the west from my current position and directly beneath my feet now is where the tunnel runs I had to be on my best behavior earlier on because I was going past the uh, police headquarters so we're continuing on now I've just passed one of the air vents as well for the tunnel I'll show you a picture of it and we're continuing on now down towards the Newlands Inn in Golden Valley and it certainly is quite a nice day at the moment the pace is fast or as fast as I can make it while I'm stopping and starting recording audio but I'm trying to beat the weather as you well know by now right let's keep it going keep the legs working what a glorious day welcome back so we're down in the Golden Valley now 
I've uh, finished the little section above the tunnel, the Butterley Tunnel, and just in my, just in the background rather, is the former Newlands Inn. It's all boarded up now. I think they had a fire there. Um, I want to say around about five or six years ago, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I'm walking back on myself now, ever so slightly, from the road that runs through Golden Valley. And we're going to find, or I'm going to show you, the eastern portal to the Butterley Tunnel. Just above me now on the rise just there is the end of the Golden Valley Light Railway. Another small uh, venture that is in this area you can take a trip on the railway. Right, so as I approach the tunnel now, I can see it. I'll pan around for you. There is some steps there. I think there's a weir at the top and the water flows down, obviously. And we've got the eastern portal of the Butterley Tunnel in the distance. And they seem to have done some work here since the last time I came. Uh, it's been about two years since I've been down to this bit. After a small break in the Golden Valley, I've now reached the Codner Park Reservoir. You can see there the canal flowing down from uh, the direction that I've uh, walked from the Newlands pub or the remains of the Newlands pub and then the Codner Park Reservoir stretches out this way in front of me. Right so after the Codner Park Reservoir we've got a series of locks these are the remains Looks to be being used for everything but sailing canal boats down now. <laughs> oh dear. Welcome back once again. So uh, I've reached the end of the intact section from pretty much the Newlands Inn. As you pass over the road there and it passes through the Codner Park Reservoir and then it goes through the locks which you've just seen and then it ends here and this section is now filled in sadly and it's the Erewash Meadows Nature Reserve and I know from previous visits here that this bit is rather boggy so I mean I'm mildly messy at the minute that is nothing I've been up to my knees in peat before it's not a problem but now this section here, I'm guessing we're going to get dirty. But it's not a problem. The river Erewash is down in the valley there. So we're going to keep moving on. I'm making really good progress actually. Quite surprised. Right. Whoops. Let's do it. What did I tell you? <laughs> Who would have thought walking the bed of a disused canal that it'd be boggy? This is the section that I've walked before and I remember it being really quite bad along this section here. Worse than it is today actually. So, incidentally, the section just back there is farmland and there is not a trace of it at all. It's only a small section. But uh, bear with me while I pick through this. It's a mixture of bog, water, uh, bovine excrement <laughs> and oh, God knows what. Welcome back. I'm down in the Erewash Valley. Um, I'm following as best I can the remains of the canal. Just back this way it was all filled in but I think I found a section here that looks very canal-esque so 
please correct me if I'm wrong, because I would like to know, but I think this may also be part of the canal. There is lots of wetland around here, so it may just be a little bit of wetland that's deceiving me in a very straight and uniform looking canal-esque shape. But we're still continuing on, and it does say in the research that I've done that um, pretty much after the leg that we walked from uh, Newlands past Ironville to the start of the nature reserve, just checking out the, uh, the wind level on the zoom there, it does say that it's quite broken and quite indistinct because it's been filled in for farmland. So we're going to continue on now. Welcome. So this is it. This is the Great Northern Basin at Langley Mill. So I've finished the 14.5 miles of the Cromford Canal, but I'm sure with all my detours, I've probably done about, I'd say 15 and a half, close to 16. But I will put some info on screen now. And that is my track log from ViewRanger on my iPhone. So I was here last week, and this is one of the things that uh, spurred me on to get my act together and walk it. This is the Great Northern Basins, I've just said. You've got the Erewash Canal leading off down there, and what was the Nottingham Canal leading off in that direction. And then this point here is the Cromford Canal. From the last time I spoke to you, I had to uh, take a diversion on the road because that's all you can do now. Walk via the road into the centre of Langley Mill, or what I believe is the centre of Langley Mill, probably isn't, and then take this little detour here. So I've done it in really good time actually. I expected to take probably around about eight hours, but it's taken me six, which is an average of around about, let's say, just over two and a half miles an hour. And I only stopped for, I think it was 15 minutes for lunch, but obviously I've been standing about, messing about, recording audio and taking pictures, etc. So this is it. Right, so all that left, is left <laughs> all that is left to say now is thanks for following and thanks for watching and thanks for taking an interest and I hope you enjoyed following along. Right, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>